Hey, beautiful souls and creative minds. Welcome to The Artist Stoop, the podcast where we turn the art world into your personal playground. I'm Jillian Zapata, your host, and I can't wait to dive into the art world with you. Each episode, we'll be kicking it with an incredible artist, unraveling their stories and turning the spotlight on the magic that happens beyond the brush. Get ready to discover new perspectives, forge connections, and immerse yourself one captivating conversation at a time. So grab your favorite beverage, maybe a sketchbook, and let's jump into the kaleidoscope of creativity together. This is The Artist Stoop, where art isn't just a thing you see, it's an experience you feel. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Artist Stoop. Today, our guest is Valerie Wells. She is a seasoned artist and the creative force behind the Stitch and Post in Sisters, Oregon, a thriving family-run business for 49 years. Valerie's art career includes block printing, fabric design, and quilting, and is a paramount part of the vibrant legacy shared with the story's history of the Stitch and Post. So today, we have Valerie Wells with us. Welcome! And also a personal friend. Yes, I... Ah, so like I said, one of the things that, um, all the artists that I've had on so far are people that I have known or met and you and I are, you are the artists that I have known the longest and not only just our friendship and us working together, but I've known of you the longest having grown up in sisters. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's funny. Cause I was just, I was remembering like, okay, well, what can I say? about her like when we met and all this but i very specifically remember when i used to work at the coffee the drive through coffee stand and you would I come through you with that? the Which one with one? dairies the oh, the one yeah. on the part next to the um the car wash yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> back in the early 2000s <laughs> um and i remember you would come in in your passat and you would order your coffee. And I remembered being like, oh my gosh, that's Valerie Wells. Act cool. Act cool. Don't say anything stupid. That's cool. She's kind of a big deal in town. Don't say anything stupid. She's an artist. Okay, cool. Act cool. <laughs> when I was in high school. <laughs> oh, Jillian. <laughs> I do. I remember that. And you were, you're a big deal. Like if you, okay. I have to explain this to our audience. Okay, people. In Oregon. In Central Oregon, to be exact, there is a small town next to Bend. It is called Sisters. Yes, it is called Sisters. It is named after the Three Sisters Mountains. This town is the epitome of a Hallmark Christmas movie town. Um, it is about a mile long. Um, it is very country western theme. And um, it is, everyone knows everyone. There is no stoplights. Is, is there still no stoplights? I haven't been there in a while. We have Still. a roundabout now, though. Oh, man, fancy. That's some fancy <laughs> shit right there. And everyone knows everyone. When I, when me and my family moved there in 1995, I think population was somewhere around 900 people. Um, and you grew up in this small town. So it was probably even smaller when you went to school there. And obviously there's, you know, the subdevelopments outside of the actual city limits. But it's a very artistic community um the arts thrive there like they encourage the arts so much in this community wouldn't you say like it's a very prominent yeah, part of uh, of the community to this day our like, culture it's definitely our culture for sure yeah um like if someone who if you come out of that town and you are a musician or an artist or some type of creator in, in town did something wrong so anyway we have valerie wells here and also how I also know her very well is I ended up working for you, with you. I worked at the shop. I was the buyer for the yarn side and for the art side, home goods. And then I ended up being kind of your assistant with you as in your studio. And then we just, over that time, like you and I became very, very good friends. Um, and yeah, spent so many time actually... I do have to tell, share this one story. The artist stoop, people. This concept <laughs> of the artist stoop. It is right here in this vicinity. <laughs> it is in Valerie's Valerie's studio. If you go out, she has the stoop on her second floor outside her studio. There is a stoop stairs that leads outside, and you have a beautiful, beautiful 
landscape of the mountains and of this uh, wood canyon. And you see the most beautiful sunrises and sunsets and all four seasons. And we used to go when we'd get tired working or if we just needed a break, we would go out onto the stoop with a glass of wine, always. And we would sit on the stoop <laughs> and we'd have our, our stoop chats, you know, to talk about life and what we were going to work on and creativity. Yeah. Did I leave anything out? No. I still go out there a lot. I just talk to myself. <laughs> Yeah. It's a good stoop. I mean, it it's is where a the good artist stoop was born. <laughs> it was actually in your studio that I actually came up with calling it the artist stoop over 10 years ago. Yeah. That's a memory. So, Val, Valerie, you are known in town. Like, when you go out in town, people know you. You know, you're known for the quilt show, you're known for the store, you're known, you're Jean Wells' daughter. You know, you're yeah. known for your. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big one to carry. It oh. is. It's huge load, especially in that town. And, you know, yeah. the biggest outdoor quilt festival in the world. You designed all these fabrics. And so, you know, before we jumped on, you were talking about how when you were creating, you were always creating for profit, for commercial use, for whatever. And now you're finding this shift in yourself to how do you create for the sake of creating and just for yourself. How, how is that transition happening? Oh, well, you know, because when I was, I always knew I wanted to be an artist and my mom always said to me, heck yeah, you can be an artist. You just may have to have an A job, a B job and a C job. Wise Which, words from Gene Wells. I still live by. Right. <laughs> Which um, is great. So, so I am 100% blessed that I've been a working artist for 25 plus years and, and have supported my family and have an awesome life. And, but I, uh, I turned 50 this year and, um, I know, right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's the wine talking. Keep going. Um, and so I'm, I'm, like in this this place of wanting to i don't know i want <laughs> you know i want to be able to create cuz i want to create and and it's hard to give myself permission to do that um and so it's been a very interesting journey and um so to celebrate on my 50th well it was several months after but you know you get the whole freaking year when you turn 50 well you should all the time but anyways um, I spent extra time in Morocco after one of my artist retreats. And so, and I was like, this is just my time to be an artist. Cause I had no responsibilities or demands that I have in this town and with three teenagers and all the things, right? Life, which is beautiful, but it can be all consuming at times. And it doesn't allow you to like really access that that inner creativity and just who you are as a person you know just I mean we evolve that way anyways just like through our life and like what what offers what comes comes into your life like you 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 have a baby now so it's a whole different world for you learning how to be an artist right yeah. and um I've already done that and and then I went through a divorce and I learned how to be an artist after, well, I'm still learning. <laughs> it's a process. But it's been three years. And so I'm, I'm a different artist now than I was then. And so I feel like this, like to be true to who I think artists are, which is ever evolving because art is ever evolving and creativity is ever evolving, that we do that. We like go from one stage in our life or one place and then you hit this like stride and then you hit like this uncomfortable wall <laughs> which my wall right now is is doing something that maybe nobody will ever see and I might just like paint over it god damn it <laughs> no you're not it's gonna be beautiful you were describing it to me and I I need to see it at some point but it it's gonna be beautiful I think that as an artist you you've been stuck in this mindset of create 
commercial make money. I think you are in this, you are now in this era where you get to allow yourself to play, to experiment. Yeah. And I think it's going to be, and, and it's not just going to be, I have to create something that's going to be for fabric. It's actually going to be on campus that, you know, is going to be sellable to people. You are reinventing yourself as Valerie Wells, the artist, not the fabric designer, not yeah. the owner. You are now in this, this crossroads or this, you know, I don't even know what to call it. This next phase, this next album of your life, if we want to like talk about musicians, you know, albums. Exactly. Um, and you get to be Valerie Wells, the artist. Well, it is. I mean, for sure. And it's it's interesting because I think that even like going through like this process of, of playing around with things just because, you know, I'm home alone and I'm like, wow, I feel somewhat inspired. <laughs> right. And you're like, I'm not going to sit on the couch and watch Netflix tonight, yeah. you know, because sometimes we need decompressed days like that. I mean, or yeah. like I'm going to binge watch Ted Lasso again, you know, for the 18th time. Right. So it's been fascinating to explore and push the boundaries for myself and my uncomfortableness. Because I think, or I guess what I notice is when I do that in other fashion, you know, other years and as things have evolved and like every time you push yourself as an artist or you push an idea um, that makes you uncomfortable, then, you yeah, know, you're onto something. Yeah. And then, and, and then, you know, out of my uncomfortableness, like, okay, so I find this balance between the two and that maybe it doesn't have to be one or the other in my life. Like, I think a lot of times uh, there's this black and white thinking. So the black and white thinking would be either I create art just to make money or I create create art just for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right mm -hmm. it's black and white and I really feel that part of my journey is to always always see what other possibilities are so that then I'm more the more curious I am the more I'm open to creativity and the more I'm open to inspirational bursts that happen and and then you know there becomes a gray like what if it's some of both? What if you just create things and then you never know a year down the road, you're like, oh, now I know what I'm going to make to sell off of this, right? And why isn't that okay? It's totally right? fine. And exactly. So, but it for me, it's this giving myself permission, right? You know, when, and I think a lot of times as creators, we, we, we filter ourselves very, before we're allowed to yeah, get to that point. Yeah, very big self-doubt demon, you know? So. Yeah, that's my thought on that. You know, you just get, I just, ah. Uh, I know, I get it. I 100% so get it. Yeah. So, so I can describe your work a little bit to, to people so they understand. So Valerie did, used to do more hand drawing and a lot of obviously pattern repeats because you were doing a lot of stuff for fabric design, but your work has been evolving. You've been doing a lot of block printing for your work where you yeah. actually sit down, you have an idea, you put it on your scratch paper, you actually sit down and look at your block, you design it out, and then you sit and you freaking hand carve to the like block. very, yeah, you hand carve the block to very finite details, which takes a lot of patience. And then you use the blocks to then transfer, you know, like block, do block printing onto canvas or onto fabric. And she, and those then repeat, but then you mix in your colors and you create these beautiful canvases of, you know, these different blocks that repeat patterns or, you know, it's the block on itself doing something where you get to play with the block um, in, a, in a magical way. So that's kind of a rough idea visually, people. The best way I could describe Valerie as an artist. So how in it's all about the layering. It's all about layering and color because that's my 
that's when I'm the most, when I pull out a large piece of fabric and I pull out this like collection of blocks. So this is why I carve so many, so many different blocks is because I like to have a library. So it's all about the mood, right? <laughs> so, and, and then, and sometimes I, I sit down and I'm like, I just make blocks that are like background blocks that are very, very beautiful and simple, but they're simple. They're background. They're not very interesting. And then you add something else on top and then something else on top and then et cetera, et cetera. So I always have this variety of blocks and then, then it's all about playing with color and like what mood of color I'm in. Emotionally, mentally, physically, right? All the things. All the things. Or like I'm inspired by something or some, I don't know, sometimes it's like, sometimes I just see a weird color combination and then it sticks in my head and the next thing you know, I'm pulling fabrics and mixing inks to to reproduce the inspiration of some sort. Yeah. Where do you get the inspiration for the blocks that you carve or these color palettes and all that jazz? Well, you know, honestly, you know, life does most of the inspiration, but the retreats that I host retreats in Bali and Morocco. So a lot of my work has been in over the past, well, started doing retreats in 2016 in Morocco. And, um, and so then Bali was like 2018. And so they, there's amazing, fascinating art in both of these places. And so I'm constantly inspired. And I, I think bits and pieces of it will come out in then other times it's very direct. Like it looks like a Moroccan tile I just carved and now I'm going to repeat it like a Moroccan tile. Then color palettes, let's see, color palettes, uh, travel for sure. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, other people's work. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Nice. And then other times I just, I don't know, a piece of fabric. You're surrounded by it constantly. <laughs> Weird like, how that would happen. Some, some random fabric that comes into the store and I'm like, oh, I really like that color. And then, then it usually sits in my studio and it has to stew. Right. Like, I'm not sure if you're a stewer type of artist or not. I'm very much of a steward, like, oh, I am ideas just hang out in like this. I swear, like there's little cauldrons of, of ideas inside my brain and they just stew. And then eventually it's ready and it comes out. So I do the same thing. And that's why I have like phone notes and like different Pinterest boards and like words. It's just like, that. that's a perfect word. It stews. It needs to stew for a while before it's ready to make its way onto canvas. Because when you rush it, then it doesn't work out. Rushed. It feels yeah. rushed and then you're disappointed. And then, you know, like all the demons come up and yeah, you it's know. like trying to be in a forced relationship. Yes, exactly. And you don't, nobody wants that. <laughs> right. Right. So a lot of travel to Bali and um, Morocco and I know because I follow you on Instagram and obviously I'm looking at you right now and I see your mood board. You all always had good mood boards, you know, for whenever you're designing fabric, there's always a mood board in your studio. Does anything like in particular from that, I know you mentioned like the Moroccan tiles, but is there any other inspiration that comes from those places that you like, when you see something, you're like, oh, that would make a great block or oh, that's the perfect inspiration for a block. Um. <clears throat> So things like that don't, they don't, sometimes it comes to me that way, but usually it's a no, you know, usually it's like, it's fast, like in the sense of like, so I was thinking there's this garden that we, so on our artist retreats, we, we do a lot of the same things. <laughs> and um, so I've been to this one garden in Marrakesh, which I absolutely love. I love it. And actually I even go back not on retreats just so that I can be there longer. So that's how much I like this place. And the last time we were there, it's a garden that's, that's mixed with all sorts of different art. And, and you usually go in the same way every time. Right. And I visit the same things <laughs> and then I go out and I sit and have coffee and stare at the mountains. Um, and so this time <clears throat> I went and had coffee first, <laughs> sat at the mountains, 
talk to my friend Kelly who does her retreats with me, talked about inspiration and like all the people and because we have these amazing people that come on our retreats and um, it's very, it's very fulfilling. Anyways, mm -hmm. so I decided, so we get done, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go take pictures because I always have my camera. And I, I was about to head to the beginning because like I always start in the beginning. I was like, wait a minute. This time, start from the from the end and go backwards. And what do you see differently? Like maybe, maybe you'll see something completely different that'll inspire you to take photos. Because, you know, photography is a huge part of my inspiration. And a lot of times I just take all these photos and then over a period of time, as I look at them over and over again, that's when I start seeing designs. And that's when I start seeing color palettes. That's when I get ideas of different layering of different types of images and things, things like that. So the photography really, <clears throat> really is what um, is my basis. Cause that's what I started doing when I was 13. That was my thing was photography. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, and I got some really cool shots going the reverse way. <laughs> Isn't it how f funny how something so simple, so simple can be like going backwards, you get a different angle, you get a different perspective, and it completely changes how you see things. Yeah. And how you're going to be like, oh, I didn't see that last time. And when I look back at the photos, because I had been there, you know, a month or so beforehand. And I look at the photos and it's really interesting to see what I saw going the reverse and how, you know, yeah, it was really fascinating. It was Love a really it. cool exercise. I would love to see the photos at some point <laughs> so I can see that. But yeah. yeah, I need to print them out and replace some of the ones on here. So <laughs> put them up. When you create, where do you end up showing some of these pieces? Because I know you do pieces. So you do the pieces on the fabrics and you stretch them. And are you only showing in the store? Or do you reach out to other places to try and show your beautiful work? Oh, no, it's just at the shop. And then what happens? They sell out instantly, don't they? Some Well, no, there's like six pieces up there right now. No, no, it was, and that was just new last year. That was like the new thing I decided to do last year, right? And before that, a lot of times, <clears throat> and it's really what it kind of between January and June is when I come up with whatever I'm going to do to put in our show during the quilt show and our really, really busy time of the year, right? And so that month is when my mom and I have our work up and that's when we sell our work. And, um, I, it's just whatever hits me that year, <laughs> which is why I'm trying to like re this week. I was like, oh my gosh, I better make a plan. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so last year I was on this moth and butterfly and mushroom sort of obsession. I still kind of am. I have another moth block to carve and I really want to do when, sorry, total sidetrack. Hello, artist brain. I really want to do, you know, the moths that when you look at them, that looks like they have a skull on their back of their body. Have you ever seen those? No. I can't remember the name of them. Oh, they're, any, they're really cool. And my, you know, my middle daughter, Violet, <clears throat> is a little dark sometimes. <laughs> and so they really want me to carve one of those. So I am going to do a couple more moths, but I had taken all these pieces and stretched them on canvas but you know they just they hang in our shop that's what i do with my work <laughs> you know for now that's the most capacity that i have because running that shop is it takes a lot of time a job and a half <clears throat> it is i think i'm putting this out into the world for you are you ready for this <laughs> yes i'm ready for this we need to update your website and we need <laughs> other galleries and other places that's not in the small town of Sisters Oregon to showcase in a quilt work. shop in the quilt shop, in a quilt to shop. shop. <laughs> to showcase your work. hey I own you know that's one of the things that I've realized over the years um, as much as it seems so silly when you tell people well, yeah you're an artist and I design fabric and make quilts you know and you always get that look 
And I realize... Because it sounds like an old lady thing? It does. Dang, those old ladies have supported me for years. Like 25 years. And I love them for it. They have. And I love that I found this as my niche. And so I own, you know, like... Because... As you know, I'm divorced. So on the dating scene, I own, I like have no problem going, yep, I own a quilt shop. <laughs> I mean, sounds amazing. No, it, if it, it's so hard to explain to people like who've never been to town and how much of an impact that store is to that town, you know, it's so if it were any other quilt shop, I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's cool. But the fact that it's the shop that it is that produces what it does with the quilt show. And I just, okay. Insert here, people. Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show is a show that happens the second Saturday of every July without fail, with the exception of 2020. But without fail, the whole town hangs art art like quilts not just your normal like you'll have blo you know your normal classic quilts but it has artistic quilts that are abstract in design and then you have pattern and textures and layers to these quilts and it covers the entire town pretty much the you can't drive in the streets people are walking people come from all over the entire world literally 1250 quilts 1250 people come from all over the world <laughs> to see these art quilts that happens on this one Saturday in July. And obviously there's classes and stuff that lead up to it, but it's a whole nother level of artistry that had I not grown up in this town, I would have been like, huh, what quilts? <laughs> eh? But it, it's truly an art form in itself. And I think, I think they're honestly, as I've been seeing art, in the art world come about there is this new i think there's this new wave of textile art that is really happening whether it's with you know people using the the guns to make rugs you know i'm talking about you know they've seen those or they're bringing in yarn to hang that gets dyed different colors and hung at different levels and textures and thicknesses or bringing in the fabric you know kind of a lot like what your mom does but then also with the painting aspect to it on top of it and had i not seen it growing up every year i would have been like huh what but it true and watching these ladies create watching you create watching your mom create and it's truly fascinating and it takes a lot of hard work and skill it certainly does that's so it so you don't just own a quilt shop. You own the quilt shop. In some, yes. To say they say yes. In Sisters Oregon? Yes, I do. So Which is why it's such a big job. And Val doesn't spend a lot of time developing her own identity as an artist, which is, which as I think is part of my journey now as, as I've, I've learned how much there has to be a balance, right? Like, so the shop, that's my job. Ask my mom. It's very creative and I have a very creative job there and, um, you know, and it connects the rest of my life all together. Right. Yeah. And I don't know any different. My mom opened that darn store when I was a year and a half and the quilt show started when I was a year and a half. So like, I don't know any different. Yeah. Um, so I lost my train of thought. So where was I going with this, Jillian? Oh. You don't know. Um, so this shop, th that then my other identity of trying to figure out who I am as an artist outside of being Jean Wells' daughter and owner of the Stitch and Post and, um, you know, what does that look like? And I don't know if it's turning 50 has all of a sudden made me um, feel like I have to evaluate that now or what, but um, I think it's an interesting part of my journey. And, you know, in the long run, you know, it's still all me and, yeah. and whatever I, I tackle as, as like my time in this studio will definitely benefit what I do in my business. Right. Like they all intertwine. And when you feed both of them, then, you know, you get better results all around.
Yeah. You do. I just, I, I think me wanting for you, I just, I want you to break free. Sorry. I'm a really bad singer. I'm not going to sing for you guys. <laughs> um, sorry. That's what happens when Val and I get together people. Okay. Um, yeah, no, it, I think for me as your friend, because you are so incredibly talented, that's one of the reasons why I brought you, I wanted you to be a guest on here because I do want other people. I want collectors, genuine art collectors to be able to see the value of your work and what it brings to the art world because you come at it from such a different angle because you have that pattern repeat that fabric designer angle that you look at how you create with those layers upon layers so differently you know and because you're surrounded by color all the time i remember when i was when i'd be in the shop and i'd be over on you know the twig side if that's what it is even now i don't even know no it's not okay well when i was on that side when i was on the yard side and i would look across the store and i would see the wall of batik fabric you know, because that's what I could see in direct view. And you'd see every single color. And you'd see the rainbow of color and all the different patterns and textures and everything. And you it brings you joy being in there. Oh, I remember. I just like being in there, it it, it it's all consuming. And you do have you do have all of that as inspiration and whatnot, but I just think that you, where you're going with your art that I've seen over the last, you know, couple of years is so unique and it's so different because you also have access to all the fabrics that you get to print on. You get to, instead of just picking up a plain canvas, you choose your canvas. You choose, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to dye my own fabric in sh Shibori. I'm going to bring this indigo to this table to do something on. I'm going to take this batik fabric, this whatever fabric, this textured pattern fabric that no one else is going to have. And I'm going to use it as my canvas to start my palette. Yeah. And that in my eyes brings this level of creativity that myself was like, Oh, I just, I get to go out and just buy canvas whether it's primed or unprimed, and then I choose. What oh, I can send you some fabric if you want to paint on it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's, I actually have a whole, like, picture screenshot, a whole bunch of fabrics from the shop that I was like, ooh, that one's good. Ooh, that one looks cool. Let's do that. Um, no, but I think, I really think that y showing your work outside of this realm of of home is I think would be amazing for you. And that's, like I said, it's one reason why I wanted to bring you on the show so that other people get to experience, you know, Valerie Wells, the artist and all your creativity that I know and love about you, you know, and obviously where the stoop was born and you <laughs> born That's very important. The stoop. <clears throat> <clears throat> um, excuse me, but yeah, that's, I just think it's really special. So thanks. You're welcome. Um, I love what I do. You know what I realized though? Like, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure how, how I would assume most artists are like this. Um, Cause we tend to be deep and intense. Um, we have moments, right? <laughs> that um, like, I realize when I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, Right. Like mm -hmm. is when you're in those moments of complete joy and like focus and 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 not focus in like a closed minded, but like focused in the moment. Right. Mm -hmm. And I realized for me is like, OK, so. When I catch myself in those moments, those are the ones I want to keep nurturing. Yeah. And I think that that that's like the key for me and finding some random color of fabric and layering it with other colors and designs and textures, then that's my mojo. That's when I'm like in my happiest place. And I make these, 
So last year I made these two really large pieces. Yeah. And I stretched them on these, oh, actually stretched them on the canvases that I'm now, that I'm now, that I took the fabric off now and I'm painting. I recycle my shit all the time. I mean, we so all do. I printed these big old things and, and loved every minute of it. I love the process of like doing one thing and not quite knowing what's going to happen next. And then it happens, like it comes to you and you're like, yes. And then you do it. And then you're like, oh, I wonder what color next. And, and you're not quite sure. And then it comes to you and then it works perfectly. And how, like for me, it's just layer upon layer upon layer and making the right block decision. So I had these big pieces and because, you know, my blocks are carved one size, like I can't make them bigger. It didn't proportionately look very interesting on the big canvas. So I cut the fabrics off and I'm like, <laughs> now I'm just going to make something out of them. I was like, this is the beauty of being able to sew. <laughs> Right? Like, I think I'm going to make these all into zipper pouches and then I'll sell them. That's the beauty of upcycling your art. <laughs> right? Like the things that don't work, like I either paint over them or I make them into something. I'm like, well, there you go. I, I think that's part of the whole artistic journey anyway, is like figuring out <clears throat> like okay, I'm going to make this. If it doesn't work out, that's fine. Paint over it, do something with it. But you have this unique thing to it where you can take it off and you can repurpose it in a way that will still be someone enjoying your artwork. That's something that was handcrafted by you in a unique way. Yeah. Yeah. And I think my practice, like one of the one of the things that I have to like remember to hone in on is that practice of, of when you get an idea, just make the shit. And then if it then is like for me, if then you fold up the fabric and you like stick it on your shelf and you discover it like a year later and you're like, oh, that was actually really good. I think I'm going to do this with it now. And, and, and I think it's like, it's remembering to follow the thread. Like if I, if I, if I stop and like worry too much about how I'm going to, you know, what's gonna, the end result, yeah. then I don't enjoy or experience growth within the process. Right. Cause every time you do something, you grow as an artist, right. And you learn <laughs> how to do something better or, or, or then it sparks some idea and then you're like, oh, I'm brilliant. And, you know, and then you do something else. I had one of those moments just before I called you actually. And what was that? <laughs> okay. So I have oh, now. All right. So one of my most, one of the things I'm really obsessed about in Morocco are these woven baskets. Mm -hmm. And there's one restaurant in particular that has an entire like ginormous wall covered in these baskets that are like, you know, 24 inches around. And they're like kind of, they're shallow baskets, right? Yeah. So they're more like, well, you put them on there and you put like fruit in it or whatever, or you hang them on the wall. So they have this entire wall and it's full of all these colors and textures and shapes and all these things. And I'm absolutely obsessed with them. So, and I've never quite figured out how to carve one exactly how I want and to get one really big. And so when I came back from my retreat in October, I had this brilliant idea. <laughs> I was like, it's a, <laughs> it's a basket. Why don't you just carve a piece of the pie? Right? Just carve oh. a little bit. If you carve, cause I'm like, I'm, none of my blocks are big enough to make it as big as I want it. I wanted it big. I wanted it like life-size, right? Like the one I, because my mom, that was the one thing my mom asked for when I went to Morocco. Will you bring me back one of those baskets? I'm like, yes, I will. It took me forever to find one that was perfect for her, but did. And, and so I wanted it like life size. And so none of my blocks were big enough. And I was like, oh, a quarter of a, a quarter of a circle <laughs> is, I can cut a quarter of a circle and then I repeat it. And then you can and then I cut them both. Right. And so then I cut because that, you know, it has, it's big pieces and has um, lots of areas that are open mm -hmm. that are just the fabric. 
Yeah. You know, I cut then these kind of secondary blocks um, of the design. So then I print those in there and so I can get more colors. Right. Yeah. And so I was, I have three of them that I tested up on my wall, just around the corner. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and all of a sudden I looked at them and I was like, Oh, they'd make the most beautiful placemats. <laughs> so I've decided I'm going to, I'll test them on my mom first, right? Like um, <laughs> I'll make her a series. Cause she loves that stuff from me. Right. And, and then the best part is, is like, is when I go over to her house and she has some random table runner I made her one year for Christmas, like years ago. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, that looks really pretty. <laughs> I should oh, do that again. Along with some Judy Campbell um, vases on top of it. Oh, church. Yes. Judy Campbell vases. So, yeah. So, you know, just following the thread of creativity. That's why you have all the stuff up, right? Mm -hmm. And you, like, take what you're inspired by and then you do it. And then you don't care what happens next. That eventually something will come to you. Uh -huh. Like my placemats on the wall now. These were just test prints. And I'm like, they're so pretty. I'm going to put them up on the wall. <laughs> And now, two months later, inspiration has hit. I mean, I could see it. Okay. What if you recreated? See, people, this is what happens when, this is as if Valerie and I were having a real artist stoop chat. I was just going to say. What if you, then, I'll also, cheers, we use, you know, wine. <laughs> Our glasses are so similar. God, this is how <laughs> so alike you and I are. <laughs> Olivia gave me this for Christmas. So I'm not sure it's a good sign when your 18 year old gives you a wine glass for Christmas and she says you need a variety, mom. <laughs> I mean, you do. They need to be pretty. Okay. This is what I think you should do. <clears throat> I think you need to take another big ass canvas, like big. And I want you to take your quarter of your pie. And I want this is a challenge for you. I want you to recreate the wall of baskets hanging with the different blocks of baskets on a big ass campus. I only have three of them carved. I'd have to come up with like a lot more, but okay. And then, you know, that would be really pretty actually. <laughs> I'm like imagining like all the colors. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> and the textures. And then, then not only will you block print on them, then you're also going to, because I don't know what the textures of these things are. I, don't, I've, I, I think you've posted a photo about them on your Instagram and I saw them casually once. Then you're going to add the different layers and textures by then hand embroidering little bits and pieces on top. And this is going to be, I want, the, I want this to be like, there's five, some legit five, five. we'd have to, we'd have to, um. I'd have to, there's well, it's some logistics. It's not going to be stretched yet. Okay. What's a fabric roll cup? 54 inches wide. Okay. So this is going to be a 48 by 48 piece or a 48 by, and then 72, make it long. It doesn't have to be high or you can go high and then maybe make it skinny, but yeah. You gave me some ideas actually. Okay. All right. I might have to, I might have to, I might have to do something with this. The next what? weekend that the kids are at their dad's. <laughs> when I so and my my cat gets so annoyed because I stick my earbuds in and so then I can't hear anything yeah and that's as artists yeah. too it, it would be really bad if someone actually came to my house <laughs> so I lock all the doors <laughs> right I just come up into my studio <laughs> and um put the earbuds in and you go to and, town you tune yeah, everything maybe out I'll find one of my yeah hmm all right you're welcome and then you're going to do a whole a stew pot. It's a new stew pot in my brain now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> and then I can make placemats. And then you can make your place high. <laughs> but we, the point of this podcast, the point of you comment, we are creating Valerie Wells, the artist who sells big ass canvas paintings of her original work to showcase to the world. Okay. That, that's what we're doing because you were okay. Helen. I didn't get that memo. Yeah, well, it's a memo I just created for you as we're having this stoop chat. I mean, yeah. 
you know, you have all this beautiful inspiration. You have all this design. I just feel, yeah. And from Bali and Morocco and you have all this creativity built inside. I just want, I want you to play. Okay. I am giving as your friend, as the owner of the stoop chat, I'm giving you permission to play and permission and permission to grow as an artist and to, to show your work beyond, beyond this, this, the walls that is the stitch and post (laughs) because it deserves to be beyond. All right. You know what you should do? You should take some of the canvases and not have them stretched and then take them back to Morocco to sell. Well, I, I, okay. So it's really funny, you know, cause I bought these pre-stretched canvases and they're like three feet by five feet. So they're pretty big. They're, I mean, they're only two inches shorter than me. Right. So, and they're already stretched and, and they're ones that I've like layered with whatever. And the one I was just block printing, I, it's a good thing I'm super flexible because I had to be a contortionist to be able to get my hand underneath it, to be able to get the block printing. Yeah. It was ridiculous. And the next day I like woke up and I'm like, why is my side sore? Like, Oh, that's 50 (laughs) anyways. And so I have, you know, I have this other one that I really want to print on and I'm like, I'm not doing that again. So I think I'm literally going to like cut it off the stretcher and just put it up on so then I can actually print on it the way I normally print and then I'll get have more success and then I could actually do stitching and sew the fabric on because they all have fabric on them because you know I can't help myself and fabric's part of the layers yeah so yeah that's why like I I now work on unstretched canvas whether it's unprimed or primed because it just it's then I can make it whatever size I want. And if I choose to stretch it mm-hmm. on bars, I can, or I can hang it. What I learned from the shop, I can hang it like a quilt tapestry style. Right. I don't need to stretch it. Right. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm at. So the next phase on this, it might be like the joy one night of like taking an exacto knife and cutting it off. Like so much pleasure in that. And then I'm going to have these like stretcher bars. Like what the heck am I going to do with that? Nothing. Can link Something for your fireplace. Come. Something will come to me and I'll, you know, something will come to me. I'll store them for probably like three or four years and they'll be like, ah, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> that's why you have your studio. And that's why, you know, it. it's funny how you, I have, I have a bag of fabric from the last time I bought fabric and when we made our sister quilt Mm -hmm. i still have some of that textured cream and off whites um when we made uh the village it was the year of the village yeah yeah fun quilt i still have some fabric left over from that and i when we moved into this house i pulled it out and i was like and i also have a whole bucket full of yarn that i have no idea what i'm going to do with yet but i have a feeling that it's going to get incorporated into a painting and i'm going to buy one of those you know gun things to (laughs) Yeah, and and add it to a painting at some point. So oh, it's like, you know I, what re- I refuse thing to get rid of it. My, okay, the first thing that just came to my head is like, just you know how to crochet a chain. I don't know how to crochet. I know how to knit. Oh, okay. So just knit a chain, like just cast on. Oh. Just do all these cast on pieces. Okay. And then cast it off, right? And and then you have like a, it's almost like a crochet chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm right. Okay, I have an, I'm going to, I will, we will talk about this later because I'm great. <laughs> okay. Side note. See, people, this, this is what the artist stoop was made for, was for creativity and sharing ideas and all of that. Um, so, Valerie. Thank you. Jillian. Thank you. Thank you for coming on to this wonderful episode of The Artist Stoop. It just brings back memories of sitting on the stoop and talking with you for all those years when I was a young artist and I wanted to be an artist. I didn't know where to go. And you were so encouraging and so helpful. So thank you for that. 
Um, I love you. I've always seen something special. Thank you. <laughs> and everyone to our audience listening, whether you listened um, or you watched us here on YouTube, we will make sure to have the paintings that we talked about, um, where to find Val. <laughs> you already know where I'm pretty easy to find. She's pretty easy to find, guys. It's a small town. Just go go to Sisters, ask for it. Go to the Stitching Post and ask, hey, is Valerie Wells here? Most likely. Or you can see her work at the shop itself. You know, if you want to go for an actual wonderful experience, whether you're a quilter or not. It truly is a once in a lifetime experience to go and watch. It is unique. It is our entire unique. town covered in quilts. It Bam. really is. And the second Saturday in July. That's all you need to know. One day. You don't need to know the date. It's just the second Saturday of July. Okay. Um, so I will have all of this information in the show notes with the images ready to go and where you can buy Valerie's work, where you can follow her on Instagram and her website and all the other wonderful things that encompasses that so thank you again valerie for being on the show and thank you again i know this was a long one people but i think it was worth it today for a long tangent run episode so all right well you. thank you i love you i love you too bye <laughs> bye that, my friends, wraps up another colorful episode of The Artist Stoop. A huge thank you to our incredible guests for sharing their art and stories. If you enjoyed the conversation as much as I did, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on the next Stoop chat. And don't forget to spread the love. Share your favorite episodes with fellow art enthusiasts and let's build this community together. Connect with us on social media at Jaguze Studio and Jillian Zapata Art for behind the scene peeks, artist spotlights, and a sneak peek at my own art. Until next time, stay inspired, stay curious, and keep that creative fire burning. This is Jillian Zapata signing off from the artist stoop. And remember, the world is your canvas, so paint it vividly. Oops.